All right, well, welcome back to Mount Air. Here we are on Main Street. Now, if you need yourself a haircut or a little trim or something, no place better than right here at City Barbershop. They've been doing it since 1929, and I noticed, John, you look a little shaggy right there. Yeah. So uh, we're going to get you trimmed up. We're going to let our uh, America's barber, Mr. Uh, Jeff Doty, he's going to cut your hair. But we're also going to visit with the owner, uh, Bill Hyatt. Now, his daddy, Russell, cut hair till he was 90 years old inside here. He cut all kind of people's famous hair, Andy Griffith, all kind of people. But we're going to go in here and get you trimmed up looking right. What do you think? Sounds good. Well, come on. Let's go do it. All right. All right, well, welcome to Floyd's Barbershop right here, also known as the City Barbershop. Um, this is my good buddy, Jeff Doty. Hey, Jeff, how you doing? Good. How you known doing? as America's Barber. Now, people think about this place, they call it, when barbers come here to town, they call it the Sistine Chapel of Barbershops. I mean, this is the place. It's the it most is. famous barbershop in the entire world. And um, my buddy John's looking a little, he's going to be on TV a little bit. And he's looking a little shaggy, so I told him there's no place better because they've been doing it here since 1929. Get your hair cut. That's absolutely so, uh, right. So if you sit on down here in this chair, we're going to get you trimmed up. So introduce us uh, to the other fella here. So this other fella over here, he's the boss man. He's what we call the keeper of the flame. This is my good buddy, Bill Hyatt. Now, um, his daddy cut hair till he was 90 years old here, and Mr. Russell was the inspiration for the original Floyd the Barber on the Andy Griffith Show. So, uh, Bill is a retired teacher, educator, and uh, he decided to keep the flame open. He's not a barber. He doesn't cut hair, but he will give you free estimates. Mm -hmm. So, uh, he's here to talk to us and supervise what's going on over there, and uh, we got a lot of stuff to learn from Mr. Bill. How could I come to Mount Airy, North Carolina, and not get my hair cut here, right? You can't. You can't. Absolutely not. So I see all of these pictures up here on the wall. That's that's uh, something there that uh, took some time over the years, I guess. Uh, just, did your dad do that? Yes, uh, about 1980, the shop had been bigger for a long time. There was room enough in here for six barbers, six of these green chairs, six barbers. There was also room for a three-seat shoe shine stand in here in the same place. And in the back, there was a shave and shower room. Well, the YMCA was only two blocks away at the time, so the guys would go work out, come up, bring a shave, shower, change, come out, get a shoe shine before they would go to work. So. Yeah, it was hopping from just 7 o'clock in the morning until closing time, whatever time that ended up being. Right, let's talk about your haircut real quick. Okay. How do you like your haircut? Well, I like it like it is right now. I just want just, to trim up around the ears a little just bit. Clean up around just clean ears. up a little bit, just, yeah. I don't have a whole lot of hair, so we don't want to cut a whole lot of it off. I was thinking, if you, if you shave all this stuff off of him, Right here, uh, Je he'd look like one of them bullfighting fellas. He'd be yes, really he handsome would. then. Uh, get them no. big sideburns at him. What do you think, dude? One of them bullfighting fellas? Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> get, get him some of them tight pants that go no. halfway up his knee. Yeah, boy. You think, no, maybe not. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Jeff. It looks like he's got one lobe longer than the other. Well, I can I can do one of two things. I can either just kind of graze, just kind of graze around it, mm -hmm. or I can take it off so it's even with the other. Take a piece of the lobe off. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah, no. yeah. He looks good that way. No. Come on, I thought we're friends, Norm. We are friends. We just I, I you want know. you to look good. Well, that ain't gonna happen. I know. I never mind. I'm gonna sit here and watch. I get a haircut so it don't aggravate me so bad, you know? <laughs> no haircut's gonna make me look now, good. Now you do realize that if you only listen half the time, you only need one ear. Oh, well, uh, that's true. We could ask around and see how well you listen. There well, might be some people that tell them not, not, too, not too much. <laughs> so how long have you been uh, cutting hair here? Uh, since about nine this morning. Nine this morning just started, okay? First day at work. <laughs> In yeah. 13 days, it'll be two weeks. Well, how about that? Well, I'm a, your first 
first haircut then, I guess. Yeah, I watched the YouTube video this morning. Okay. I'm real confident. <laughs> I can see that. You're going right at it, no problem. Yes, sir. No, I've been a barber for 42 years. 42 years. Yeah. How long have you worked here? I worked here a year and a half. A year and a half. Yeah. I kind of, I had retired from another shop and thought I wasn't going to pick up the Clippers again. I came here and Bill offered me the job and what self-respecting barber could turn down the opportunity to cut hair at Floyd's. Absolutely. And the funny thing is, you know what the number one question I get here is? Are you a real barber? <laughs> I always tell them, yeah, you can touch me, I'm real. <laughs> the number one question, are you a real barber? They think you, do they think you're an actor? Well, yeah, apparently they think this is just kind of almost like a museum. Oh, so okay. they think I'm just a character actor. I mean, just a character. Yeah, that's all. I'm just a character. Do you live here in Mount Airy? Yep. How long have you been here? I've been here four months. Four months? Yeah. I lived in Winston-Salem before that. Oh, I got out of the big city and come to Mount Airy. Huh? That's right. I, I, could, I convinced him to come here. He'd come sit on my porch and, and we just lie about all kind of stuff. And I said, well, since you're such a good liar, you can come here and move in with me because I need some more help in the town of Mount Airy. That's and right. uh, that's where he came from, Winston. Yeah. yeah. One thing about sitting on Norm's porch is you hear a lot of stories and some of them occasionally are true. <laughs> some of them occasionally are true. That's true. Never let a good story get in the way of the truth. Never let a good story get in the way of the truth. Now well, I think I might have to slow down here. I'm starting to run a little low on hair. Yes, I can see that. <laughs> I know that. It, it's sad as you get older, it, it stops growing on top of your head and starts growing on your ears. I think that's because God has a great sense of humor. Yeah. I think, you know, I just kind of imagine him up there going, Hey, St. Pete, come here. Take a look. I took the hair off the top of his head and I stuck it in his ears. Man, I never get tired of that. <laughs> and you know what I call those ear hairs? Yeah, what? Those are your nonsense filters. Nonsense filters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why when they're growing out, you can't hardly hear the politicians. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, there's uh, two things that I can tell you. Number one... You're sitting in a chair that Andy got his hair cut in. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah absolutely. Same chair? Same chair. These chairs are original to 1929 when the shop opened. Uh, they were built new in 19 or uh, 25, so they're 98 years old, but they were bought brand new out of the warehouse in 1929. So they've only been used for a mere 94 years. 94 years. Yeah. And Andy started coming in here in 1932 when he was six years old his father carl would bring him in and he continued to come in until 1952 when he was 26 years old and that's when he headed off to new york to start his career in show business and we heard he did okay yeah i've heard i've heard a few things he's done so now that you have sat where andy sat you can go back home and you can tell everyone that you rub cheeks with Andy. <laughs> How about you just that? don't got to tell them which cheeks. Uh, okay. And once I give you that certificate, all your friends and family will be able to tell people you're certifiable. Sir, so, yeah, certifiable. Okay. And they may have already been saying that, but now it's official. Uh, yeah, we got it. I noticed there's a, a, a sign on the door that says Floyd's right there. Is that how much? The, the 25 cents? Is that, what, is that what it cost me today? It is. It yeah. is. <laughs> Absolutely. It's 25 cents for the haircut. But sitting in the chair where Andy sat is 15.75. Ah. But if you, you don't like the haircut, I give you your quarterback. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> You're quite the character, ain't you? I told you that already. He's just like another Mayberry character, ain't he? Ain't that the truth? It is the truth. So how do you like uh, how do you like uh, all the fans that come in and taking oh, pictures? Do you like, I love like it. See, you love it. 
I have a firm belief that happiness is contagious. And everybody that comes in here, they're glad to be here, they're happy, uh, they're excited, and that catches. And it makes me happy to be here. It makes me excited to be here. Yes, I, I, I can see there's a, the whole town's kind of a, a happy place, ain't it? It is. It is. And, and the nice thing is when they're here, you know, they're not here to complain about their doctor and all of that stuff. They're just here to talk Mayberry and good memories. Absolutely, yep. Well, we're, uh, we're excited to be here this morning. Are you your first customer this morning? Yep, yes, sir. Hopefully I'm awake enough to do this right. So what was it like here last week during Mayberry days? Uh, it, it was crazy in here. It was especially Friday and Saturday. We had the most people in town here then, had the most people going through. You do a lot of uh, haircuts on those days? Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, it's uh, during tour tourist season, um, we're probably 60% tourists and 40% locals in here. And then when it gets to be in the cold months, less tourists, more locals. So it goes the other way. It's 60% local, 40% tourists. Okay. So we keep busy year round in here. The guy you ought to be talking to, and Bill over there, that's that's Russell Hyatt's baby boy, Bill. Well, we're going to do that as soon as we get this haircut done. We'll probably step in the back there and talk to him and let you cut some more hair. All so right. We got people, we got the door locked. Uh, yeah. We got people standing outside wanting to get their hair cut. Absolutely. So as soon as you get done with me, we'll let them in and we'll we'll go back here in the back maybe at Snappy's. That's the crazy thing about this right here is right there Snappy Lunch. You go through that door. You already show them that door right there. You can go through right there and you're right in Snappy Lunch. Now, how did that come about and happen? Well, Mr. Bill will be able to give you all okay. that information. We'll go back there and set yep. the snappies, maybe, and we'll be in the well, back. Well, no, he'll be good sitting right in there? the chair. Okay. He'll be good. We'll, we'll, we'll keep we'll okay. keep tight. Got her done. Got my hair cut here at Floyd's. Be a little tougher. Mm -hmm. That all right? Good job, man. Good Thank job. you. Should we just do it? Turn you around and turn you loose. Right. There you go. There you go. Keep the change, Jeff. Thank you very much. I, I'm, not, I'm not ashamed to work with you anymore. Look how pretty he looks. <laughs> All right. He looks good. It's called Floyd the Barber. Oh. Number four. Oh, okay. The front okay. of the card information about the shot. Dad's real name was Russell Hyde. Floyd the Barber. You have to excuse. I mean, yeah. he had he had chemo and is coming back. So. He, that's oh, wow. why he does not have, well, but he needs, he needs everything. Well, yeah. let it, I, I don't know if oh, I can get around here. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'd be proud to have that back. I'm very, very fortunate to be here. Okay. Thanks, Doc. Would you mind taking a picture? You don't not at all. Have my yeah. picture made for y'all? Mm -hmm. And how about you standing over here on this side? You okay. Stand on that, that, just go around there behind you, Mary. Okay. My dad cut hair from that chair for over 68 years. Wow. You walked in the door and dad thought he had a new friend. <laughs> and the best way to seal a friendship was with a handshake. And my first name is Bill and you are? Frank. Frank. Mm -hmm. All right. Frank James, you and the kids, the uh, uh, Jesse James and all of them? No, my last name is Taylor. Oh, Taylor. Mm -hmm. T-A-Y-L-O-E. T -A -Y -L -O -E. T -A -Y -L -O -E. And I'm the last person to serve in the United States military on my branch of the family since 1776. Wow. And my, I'm actually named after all my relatives that served her. Are named, I, I'm named after Francis Marion because one of my relatives fought with Francis Marion. Wow. So. Thank you for your service and oh. your family service. Special. Thank you for your yes, service. Sir. Well, Jeff will take over now. Okay. So, so if you want to come back here and... 
Get in the haircut and chair. Don't need it. Well, this Jeff has already told you several things about the shop. I'll just quickly reiterate some of it. The shop opened in 1929 as City Barber Shop. Everything in here, basically the chairs, the two green chairs, cash register, back that we you use every day. The mirrors, cabinetry, the sinks are marble, 94 years old. The sinks have had minor things done over the years, but that's it. The chairs never worked on. They've lasted that long. They don't build them like that, I guess, nowadays. No. They probably wouldn't last. No, like Lord, that. no. These actually were, bought, were built new in 1925. They're 98 years old. 98 years old. And this child's chair I gift to dad from a barber friend from Louisville, Kentucky. 19, oh, bought new in 1924, it's 99 years old, and it too never worked on it, it's still just as smooth today. And being a child's hair, and the little booster seat, which we use, or they use, not me, but this is the original one. You can tell by the wear and tear all over. These runners were to keep it from sliding off. Well, kids wiggling around, these runners would get to where they'd get loose and have to be replaced sometimes with six barbers using it, sometimes once a month. The wood screw, the holes would get too big and so that would fall off. So basically everything, including the razor strop, and uh, not only did it sharpen straight razors, but it got my attention very quickly with that sound. The cash register in the back where Norm is standing. Let's look at that. This was bought from NCR March 8th of 1929, 94 years ago. The very first electric cash register. And you can see, Barbers had kind of a resting period between cutting hair. They come back to ring up the amount, and you can see where they stood like that, or sometimes they fire like that, like that. The old manual clippers, like shears, and you do that, you had a Popeye forearm, and so you can see that. And right here, it printed out a ticket of whatever it showed on the screen, and I wondered, if, I couldn't figure out how that was, and so I just stand here talking one day to Linda, started taking my hand off, and I, so everything on here, every, even the drawer, you know, over the years, wear and tear, never worked on. Been serviced throughout the years, but never worked on. And you still use it? We use it every day. Customer comes in, says, I need a shave. Barber cash transaction, shave, shampoo, haircuts, money coming in. Barber D, how much money he just made. Well, it printed a ticket out with that on it. End of the day, you count your cash ticket, you know how much you made. Customer comes in and says, I need a haircut, but I've only got three bucks. Will you carry me for a while? So now it prints out a ticket that says on account, Barbara B, three, how much you paid. Can you imagine taking a composition book every day you cut hair during the year, write down everything you, you did. End of the year, go through every one of those days, separate it out. Now there's a ticket for everything. And then, uh, End of the year, this is probably the biggie for the barbers. It's paid out tickets. It's expenses. Barbara, uh, barber supply guy came by. Barbara A said, I need a bottle of hair tonic. He said, be four bucks. So now he has a ticket in hand, paid out. I don't know how much. Come tax time, end of the year, all he has to do is add his paid out ticket. He's got his tax information. So you know what I'm thinking here? This is like one of the real, really first computers. Almost. It was. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's like a computer, what it doing. This is what it's been compared to for a long time, because can you imagine the day before these hit the market, they were still doing the old crank handle. And these came out, no more did you have to spend all that extra time writing it down as you did it. And you know, if, if they forgot to write something down, the extra money in here, they call it, put it in the shop fund. Well, end of the year, they take all that shop money and divide it amongst all the barbers. So at least they get a dollar or two back out of it. But this right here got rid of all of those problems for them. Amazing. And the little fuse, that fuse was in it when it was bought new. It's over 94 years old, and it too has never been replaced. And one of the guys from National told me, said, 
that will be in there long after we're all dead and gone. Said the only way that might possibly blow is if lightning struck while we were rigging something up. Otherwise, it'll be right there. Now, who's this uh, on the picture uh, right here? This picture is my dad. The picture was taken back in 2006, and which was, uh, uh, let's see, 20, 14, 17 years ago. Now, he, he kind of looks like Floyd from the show, doesn't oh, he? Oh, yeah. He was the inspiration for the yeah. Floyd. Yeah. How about that? And up here in the top back, the painting, a friend of Dad's painted Dad's portrait, cutting Andy Griffith's hair, and he was going to give it to the uh, to the little Carolina, or excuse me, Mayberry Museum, Andy Griffith Museum. And he came up here and was talking to Dad about it, and he said, you know, what better place could that picture be than right there, hanging back like there, Andy, Dad, cutting Andy's hair, looking out over everybody, so. Tell them when your Dad started taking these pictures. About, uh, this, like I said earlier, the shop was big enough to have six barbers in here, six chairs for a long time. Well, 1947, Dad started barbering, and they had just moved into this building, uh, and uh, there was room, like I said, for six chairs. There was a three-seat shoe shine stand, shaving chair room in the back, and everything. So in 1947, Dad was 22, Andy was 20, and the junior at Carolina that year. And so... Uh, Dad started taking their pictures just as a way of thanking everybody for coming in. And from 1947, excuse me, 1980 when he started taking pictures, till 1995 he took close to 60,000 pictures. Oh my goodness. And there's approximately 20,000 pictures up here on the wall, rest are in boxes. How about that? And about eight years ago, Dad's health was failing. He had dementia. One day he was sitting there and he looked up and saw the pictures and said, I'm going to take some pictures. I said, where are you going to put them, Dad? He said, well, I don't know. And so I started a Facebook page, and I now have seven pages to get ready to start my eighth one, and I've got over 67,000 pictures. How many, how many do you think you got on the Facebook page? How many, you, you, you well, I post every one of my pictures on my Facebook pages. Everybody comes in, you can't get a picture of them. Right. You didn't get a picture of me? Did well, I mean, <laughs> being the owner of the shop, I can be choicey. You said your, your, your daddy used to cut hair here. Cut hair for over he 60. he made that picture all these that was Dad cutting his hair. How long has he been gone? Dad passed away uh, uh, May the 3rd, 2014. No, 2016. He was 92. No, I'm not. I do have Jeff up there as my barber. I'm just a, I'm a retired teacher. Yeah. Well, we we better rectify that situation. Get your picture made here by Mr. Bill. Well, yeah, um, my picture with Bill. How can oh, I come? I yeah. Got my so yeah, well here you can. We'll get you in a chair. I'll take over the. Uh, we we want to be the, on your Facebook. The photography. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do it. So, We're coming come around. Come on, stand by me, Jody. Jody, get on one side. Bill on the other, and we'll get somebody to take a picture here. Where's your first? I'm going to do an abbreviated Floyd the Barber haircut. Okay. Take about a minute. Okay, let me get that. John, your hair never had so much attention in all its life, has it? Mm -hmm. This is your original shaving mug brush. Well. 1920, 1980, when Dad started barbering. All right, on the show, put my Floyd glasses on. Floyd glasses? <laughs> on the show, uh, Andy, I mean, Floyd never cut anybody's hair. I mean, he was always up here like this. And so he'd go all around, then all of a sudden, he'd take the comb, and stick it next to the thumb, bottom of the earlobe and, and up there to the bottom of the sideburn. And if he had done it right, he would have just kept his thumb there and went around to the other side. But what did he do? He switched hands. And so there's no way Barney, Barney said, and look at this, said they're not even. <laughs> and so because of the difference in the length of hair, I developed a comb that will work off for anybody. This yeah. is for the guy that has hair, and this is for the guy that doesn't. <laughs> and it massages the scalp, so it it's, you know, has a certain purpose. All right, all right, now. He's got the uh, special bald man's uh, hairbrush, too. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, uh, Mr. Bill, what do you think? We, we should let Jody trim up that last piece of hair that's sticking up um, on, on the back of his head. You think yeah. maybe get those special shears? Yeah. Yeah. Um, gra grab, grab that handle down there, Jody. Yeah, yeah. Now don't turn around, John. Don't do it. This, this, is, this needs to be a surprise. I let, got, let, let Jody cut that. She looks like she knows how to cut hair. Now, come back here where you can't see it, and then he's going to, okay. Now I'm going to help. She looks way too happy. Okay. Is that it right there? I think that's the one. That's the one right there. That's right. That's it. Watch your finger, Bill. You don't want a new nickname named Stumpy. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> you better. Oh my goodness. <laughs> all right. Oh, yeah, all right. A good barber always lets a customer look in the mirror and see what he thinks. Oh, yeah. I'm I tell you what. slick today. Man, I tell you what. Now, that, that's stuff. That's the stuff right there. It doesn't matter about the, the, the picture. I need to get you in this. There you are. Oh, okay. You got us in there? There we are. That's it. Mm -hmm. All, All right. right. We're famous now, ain't we? Uh, listen, you leave here and you're not famous, you're not paying attention. Not paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me get this off of you. Well, that was a great honor. Thank you so much. I appreciate well, that. It's been my pleasure. I wish I had time to every one of these pictures over here tell a story. A lot of these are people from the show, but the pictures in the, behind the cash register. That's about 40 pictures up there, and all of those were on the Andrew Griffith Show at least once. And a lot of them were on there twice, and practically every adult on the Andrew Griffith Show over the years were on other shows such as Gunsmoke, Wanted Dead or Alive, and Steve McQueen, Westerns. And even uh, Otis, black and white premation shows back in the 60s. The episode he was on, there were three others from the Andrew Griffith Show on that same episode. And many times, uh, what, uh, what was the guy's name that played Briscoe Darling? Uh, um, his, his name was uh, Denver Pyle. Denver Pyle. He was on every kind of Western and on the Perry Mason show. He was on like one out of ten Perry Mason shows. Good guy, bad guy, good guy, you know, good guy and bad guy. So the people on the show were gifted and they played. It was not just uh, Andy and Barney and Goober and all of that. Everybody on the show made the difference and made the show what it is. Now, have you had any of the cast members come in to the, uh, to, to the barbershop over the years that was on the show? Mm. Uh, no. Not that many, because there hadn't been all that many, really, that's been here for our Mayberry days. But, uh, you know, Betty Lee and Thelma Lou, she moved here about 17, 18 years ago, okay. I guess. Well, she, she came in? Yeah, she lived, yeah, moved here in town in a retirement thing, and for 16 years, uh, Goober, Dad cut Goober's hair back in 1989. He also cut Ernest T. Bass's hair back in 1994. And remember the episode of the kerosene cucumbers? Yes. Well, because of that, this is Aunt B's tombstone, and the thing's about eight foot tall, and across the front is always flowers, but you see going down the sides and the back, the jars of cucumbers that the public keeps around there all the time. Well, how about that? So recognize, right. can't forget them kerosene cucumbers. And this, you know, on and on, Helen Crump, this is the old Studebaker that Aunt B drove. This is your dad again, I guess. This is your dad, yeah. 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 Donna Fargo, Hackers <laughs> Girl, the whole USA. Has Donna been in? Oh, yeah. Dad cut her dad's hair and her uncle's and her grandpa's hair as well over the years. Doug Diller Band, the Darling Boys. Um, thank you so much, Bill. It's been my People pleasure. People of the Flame, Mr. Bill Hyatt. Thank you, thank thank you, you too. Thank you so much. It's been a great honor. Thanks All right. My pleasure. Well, that's quite the experience. Y'all come on back now, you hear? Uh, All we'll right, do let's do it. Thanks so much, my friend. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. God bless. Bye -bye. Good fun Thank you. Bye-bye.